Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas here on Think Tech Hawaii. And with me today, uh, we are really doing Think Tech um, on Hawaii is my mainland today, um, is a, a young woman who is a native of New York, a native New Yorker. And she has been here for a couple of years and she's gotten really integrated into the entrepreneurial startup community here. Helen Cho. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Think Tech. Thank you. Um, I, I, you came across my screen because you are launching uh, Startup Grinds, Startup Grind HNL. I keep wanting to put an S on it. I can't help it. It's a local thing. I'm yeah. sure you've run into this before. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. So next week, Thursday, um, there's going to be an event yes. at uh, Makers and Tasters, mm -hmm. which is the old Fisherman's Wharf space right there at the very Mackay end of Ward Avenue. Yes. So tell us about that. So uh, our first event is um, going to be at Makers and Tasters. Uh, the event itself started as a company started in San Francisco about six years ago, five or six years ago. It started in San Francisco as a tech event where we would have a speaker and it would be a very informal chat with a successful founder or an investor or someone that's in tech space and uh, it was more of an inspirational educational networking type of event over the years it spread to 200 cities in 85 countries and uh, we decided to bring it here to honolulu so our very first event will be at Makers and Tasters on Thursday, and our first speakers will be Brandon and Pony. They are the founders of Makers and Tasters, Street Grinds, Eat the Street, Honolulu Night Market, and we decided to go with them because this event is supposed to, it's really centered around entrepreneurs and small business owners, founders, and the work that Brandy and Pony have done, they are entrepreneurs, but they've also created platforms that support hundreds of other entrepreneurs. Yes, they've, they've, they've definitely moved the needle. Yes, and it's all to champion and be leaders for um, the local Hawaiian economy, which is a little different from uh, setting up these businesses that sort of uh, don't keep the money in the state or are more connected to other things that are connected to the mainland, maybe, per se. So. Well, you're definitely speaking my language on that. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we do want to keep the money here, yes. and we want to keep the talent here. Yes. And so we have to have something really juicy and um, engrossing for that will keep people mm -hmm. well-fed and, and happy and challenged here. Sure. So what, what kinds of things um, can people ex expect going to uh, a Startup Grind? So Startup Grind is, it's really, it's meant to be a fun thing. Um, in order to build community, you have to support it from a lot of different angles. And I think one of the foundational things about building a community is that you just grease the wheels a little bit. People have to like each other. People have to even like physically get to know each other. You know, like just in, on a physical level, like I, I meet you, I see you. Um, it can't stay all digital and just can't stay all via email or through the phone. Uh, people have to have the opportunity to talk story in person. Uh, to realize that we're friends, that we can be friends, that we've got a lot of things in common. And so what Startup Grind does is it provides a space for entrepreneurs to meet other entrepreneurs, to get resources, to realize that they're not alone. And you throw some alcohol and beer in there and it makes things a lot easier. And next week's going to be, uh, uh, the alcohol is local beer, right? Yes, it's Kona, Kona Brewery. Brewery. Yum, yum, yum. And then bacon. I yeah. <laughs> so regardless of this event being at Makers and Tasters, yeah. Makers and Tasters that night specifically is bacon night. Uh, I just thought it'd be great to have bacon and beer and business all in the same place. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's much more fun than the Better Business Bureau, for instance. <laughs> Who, by the way, are supporting us as well. So. Of course. Great, great, great. Good to know. I, as, I, as I started doing a little... Um, research on the startup grind. I mm -hmm. thought, wow, is this kind of a rotary for millennials? Or, <laughs> um, I mean, it's not so much a rotary. It's it's a um, it's a really easygoing um, event where you can still be a business-centered person because you know, as a business owner, you don't switch it on and off. You're 
always a business owner so it's, or you know just like how you're just always a mom or you're you know always a daughter right. <laughs> or whatever it is and so it's a place where you can come with that side of you and learn about resources connect with others find ways to help each other and to ask for help and be helped by people in the community so you were a member of this uh, community in new york and san francisco or just where have you been part of a, a startup a grind startup, startup grind. grind i started just here i've i have no direct uh, i guess relationship with it before oh, okay. um when i lived in new york i started a company called strategy hack which is kind of similar it was an event based company and I had a co-founder who was the New York City director of Startup Grind. So I'd been exposed to it, I knew what he was doing, I knew what it was all about, and I found it very interesting. When I moved to Hawaii two years ago, I thought this would be really good to bring, uh, to add to the Startup Paradise ecosystem. Startup Paradise ecosystem, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go a little deeper on that one. Okay. Uh, so the Startup Paradise ecosystem is essentially a, it's a collective brand uh, that we use in the tech and innovation space uh, to kind of further Hawaii as a growing tech hub. Um, if you think about tech place, tech cities, we've got Silicon Alley and Silicon, Silicon Alley in New York, Silicon Valley in the Bay, and we've got Colorado, we've got Austin, um, we've got all of these cities that are kind of bubbling up as tech hubs and uh, they tend to have this collective brand uh, and so in Hawaii a lot of the tech and innovation organizations came together and said we need to have something as well something that draws talent to Hawaii uh, gives it, we need to get Hawaii onto the map and we can't do that alone so Startup Paradise became a brand overall and it involves, uh, we've got two, three accelerators here, we've got incubators here, we've got venture capitalists here, we've got angels here, we've got startups that are here, and we're all under that umbrella. It, under that umbrella. <laughs> uh, uh, another startup success story. Under yeah. <laughs> so what brought, what brought you here? Oh, what brought me here? Uh, I have been in a lot of different places. Uh, I grew up in New York, but I went to school in Pittsburgh, and then um, I went to Korea for a couple of years. And then I was uh, writing for The Economist when I was in Beijing during the, the Olympics. And then uh, stopped by India for a little while, and I was living there for a bit. Came back home and decided to go to grad school. So I went to Northwestern in Chicago, and it was in Chicago that I had this internship in San Francisco. So that's where I got introduced to tech. Uh -huh. And then um, I decided to go back to New York where I was for three years and I, built, I helped build the tech community there. And after about two or three years, I, I, f I felt like I had done what I had come to do and I was thinking of new cities to go to and I was considering South Africa because I heard really cool things about it. And then before, after I decided to go to South Africa, but before I actually left, I came on vacation with my mother here. I came here and it was amazing. <laughs> and so I came on vacation. Three weeks later, I was back with uh, two bags and a one-way ticket. And that was two years ago. So uh, was, it, was there, when you were here for your vacation, did, I mean, did you have any sense of what the, the tech community here was? Or were you even looking for the tech community? I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I had first made the commitment to come back. And during those three weeks, I had reached out to my community in New York and I said, who do you know in Hawaii? And um, I had the same 10 names pop up over and over and over again. So, you know, if I'm going to move here, I might as well do some homework. I called them all up and I said, hey, I'm coming. How can I be helpful? What can I do? And so before I even got here, I, I got to know a lot of the people that are uh, you know, leaders in this space. And that's how I began. So what did you begin doing? I came, um, I went to all the events, I kind of got to know everybody, got the lay of the land, um, realized that it was a very fragmented sort of industry and that everyone's really busy just kind of heads down the doing... The tech. Yes, the, the tech. The tech industry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that everyone's really busy working on whatever it is that they're working on and that it was, 
it was hard to get everyone working together because there just wasn't enough bandwidth. And we had a lot of challenges that all of us were facing together at the same time. Like, what do we do about resources? What do we do about, uh, you know, losing talent? And what do we do about X, Y, and Z? And so um, I try to support as much as I can. And I found that we needed more resources and we needed more vehicles that helped us to work together. And so Startup Grind is one of those first things that I've been able to, I guess, manifest. <laughs> um, uh, in outside of the, the tech world, sure. I mean, you, um, you said in your, in, in your little bio that you have three uh, focused industries, renewable energy, medical marijuana, and tech startups. Yes. So we've heard about um, the tech startups. Maybe we can take one more before we take a little break. Mm -hmm. um, renewable energy? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so when I came to Hawaii, um, I couldn't, there was no way for me to be full time in, in the tech space. Like I still needed to eat and pay my bills. And so um, I decided to consult as I have, um, I have experience in New York and um, abroad. And so I figured there are lots of really uh, basic and also sort of like uh, not so basic things about running a business or the processes that's required to run a business or the branding and the marketing. And so I had these skills that were still useful here in Hawaii. And so I started um, looking for clients and I had decided that I really want to learn more about renewable energies. And um, Hawaii is one of the leading states Definitely. in that. And so I was lucky enough to find a client and uh, I've been learning much more about that. Hawaii is in a place where because of our unique situation of being an island and having, um, I guess, an aging infrastructure, uh, we are dealing with certain problems that are problems that uh, the mainland and other parts of the world that are in this space, they're going to eventually have to deal with uh, things like net metering, for example. And so we're dealing with it because we have to uh, earlier than everyone else, but that also gives us the opportunity to know what's ahead, to know how to deal with it before everyone else does. And that means the rest of the industry looks to us and we set those standards. So that sounds like solar. Yeah. Yeah. Solar is actually where I'm focusing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. And then, um, so the, um, the, the way that you do um, uh, cultural, um, sure. yeah, wh I, what culture is it that, you, that you're that you working with when you say you, you're a uh, you strategy and culture? Sure. Uh, consulting. When I talk about culture, it's more about the interactions between the team between members of the team and the values that the group of people decide that they're going to function by. Wow, and that's really, you know, how, how do you treat each other? What's important to you? How do you move together as a group, as a team, as a company? And how do you make sure that your processes and the way that you work align with all that? So it encourages that sort of behavior and that sort of value system as opposed to breaking it down and not having a aligned or singular culture within a group of people. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you, Helen. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a little break and come right back. Yeah, sure. Aloha. This is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman, welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha.
welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas and with me today is Helen Cho, a native New Yorker but really a global citizen yes. and um, certainly with a very broad range of interests but she's my guest today because of her work bringing the startup grind to Honolulu yes. and that's going to be for the first time ever in Hawaii next Thursday. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll talk more about that a little later, but I'm, I'm just so interested in this um, broad base of, of, of uh, different ways that you've found to um, come here and, and assist us with uh, these different new technologies like solar. I mean, well, I, I imagine we actually have are m more mature solar wise than than in most places that you've been, mm -hmm. but, um, but not mar medical marijuana. That's kind of a new thing. And yeah. We've, um, um, jumped right in. What have you found? Uh, some, I found that Hawaii was, um, is still considered one of the leaders in the medical marijuana field. Uh, we were one of the first states to legalize medical marijuana ways back. Um, it took us a little while to, you know, get these ah, 16 years, what's that? <laughs> Well, I mean, we were still one of the first. It's really important. And um, we are still one of the first in terms of, um, you know, getting these dispensaries out. And uh, we're in the process of that now. I think as a state, we're learning a lot. Um, and as an industry, we're, we're doing things uh, carefully. And so it's, it's interesting to see how we move forward. Um, I personally think that that industry is huge. It is, um, just personally, I believe that it does have, I guess, like uh, characteristics that can be used definitely for medical purposes. I've seen it work in people. I've seen it heal people. I've seen it been very useful in terms of treatment. And I feel that uh, it's important that there's a state that I'm part of a state that backs that and supports that as well. Um, and I'm honored to be part of an industry that wants to push it forward. So when you were living in California, was it legal there? Have uh, you lived somewhere, uh, is actually my real question, where it was um, legal and where it was just part of commerce? Um, I haven't. And I personally don't use it rec recreationally. So my only, um, I guess, like, uh, exposure to it is um, how it's been used medically um, it, and I haven't lived in a place where I it is used recognition so I, I've never lived in Colorado per se. Yeah. I'm we're all very interested to see how how it changes sure. if it changes uh, the life of commerce here um, I think it as will a, as you, you have that sense I, I do th I do think it will um, it's it's still we're still in a place where we have to do, we have to understand just regulation wise what it means and the limitations that they have and sort of the things that we have to work around but I think it I think it will have a huge impact on the economy and just the general well-being of the citizens here in the startup community mm -hmm. have you seen a lot of uh, momentum uh, ar around the medical marijuana or I think the way tech works is that it it's it supports successful and growing economies, right? So if there is an industry or an economy and there is a need that's not being met, there are entrepreneurs and people who are really clever and really smart that will find technology to solve those problems. Uh, the more attention an industry gets, the more people look at it and the more problems they find to fix. And tech is one of those things where they, it's a very easy to see a very obvious sort of secondary market that builds around um, an industry. And so, for example, in medical marijuana, there are so many apps, especially in, in places where there are, you know, where there's a growing and a strong uh, medical marijuana market, there's, there are apps that will tell you where the dispensaries are, how to get them delivered to your place. Uh, who the doctors are that will prescribe for you. Wow. All the different types of products that are offered. Um, there are many apps and organizations that use tech. There's also tech within the industry in terms of um, how to track and grow plants. How to... Um, track? Yeah, how, like the, the health of the plant. Oh, okay. You know, like the, yeah. Nutrient levels. Yes, all of those things. And that's that's yeah. a tech-based okay, thing, it, right? So yeah. even from that to know how testing all of your products to uh, 
integrating it into your customer experience when they're at the dispensary. These are all things that tech has, has been helping. Um, Have you, are you seeing that kind of uh, peripheral or secondary uh, layer evolving here in Hawaii? I think so. I, um, I've been at, I just had a conversation a few days ago with a friend who um, uh, is in the startup paradise space and he was just like, you know, whenever you're ready, I have some ideas for apps. I just don't know who to talk to, and I don't know what the problems specifically are. But development-wise, we're ready to code. So. so we have software developers here yes. who are wanting to get in and, and yeah. take, take up the slack. Right. Because there are, everyone has industries or, you know, parts of the world that they're interested in. They just don't know how to get involved and they bring what they have. And for some of these people, like this is tech and they, they bring their toolkit of all the things that they're capable of doing. And they're like, what problems can I fix for you? This is something, this is something I want to be a part of. And I think that applies throughout all industries. Have you seen anything particularly different between uh, the way we do startups here and the way you saw them being done in the Bay Area and New York? I think here it's done very differently only because Hawaii is a very small place and everyone does know each other. Um, I think we, and it's something that can be said about anything else about Hawaii, it's about your relationships, right? And so I think it really does depend on who you know and, um, the chances, the opportunities that you have using your network, the timing of things, um, that's, I think, very, very big. I think also more than some other places, possibly, um, your relationship with how things work politically and with the government, I think, is also much more important. Have you had much exposure to that yet? Uh, not so much, not yet, but I'm beginning to understand a little bit more uh, I think living in Hawaii has for the first time really opened my eyes in terms of how important it is to be active in that space. Just paying attention that like your vote does paying matter. Paying attention, you know, it like absolutely all of those things. does. I just didn't pay attention before because the world was, I didn't, I didn't have to. I felt like other people were handling it for me. But here it, it's, it's small enough that you can, you can see from beginning to end how those things affect you. Well, you're a very quick so. learner, Helen Cho. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so that, that whole idea about relationships being important, um, that kind of takes us back to the uh, startup grind. Yes. And next week, Thursday's event yes. at, from 5.30 to 7 at Makers and Tasters mm -hmm. uh, with beer and bacon. Yes. And the business know-how of uh, Pony and Brandon yes. Askew. Yes. And, Basically, uh, one can go and get tickets yes. there. Or do no, you have so to get them? we have them only online. Okay. We've got um, actually only fifty tickets. Okay. So once we're sold out, we're sold out. However, there is a party afterwards, uh, at starting at seven, that's open to all because Makers and Tasters is still a public venue. So at seven o'clock, we open the doors to everybody. Uh, we've got happy hour prices all night. Uh, what I wanted to do with uh, startup grind here in Hawaii is even though it is it started as a tech event in San Francisco we brought it here and we wanted to make it more about entrepreneurship in general and small business ownership in general and um, of course startup paradise is part of that but we wanted to interact more with the larger business community uh, there are entrepreneurs and founders and, and business owners everywhere in every industry and at the end of the day it is really, really hard to start a business and to keep it going. And what I want to do with Startup Grind is to provide a place where people can meet each other just as people and realize that we're going through very similar things to try to help each other and to find resources that we can share. Um, the best thing that I think will happen organically, naturally, is when you get smart people and you throw them into a space <laughs> together and they start talking, amazing things happen all the time. I truly believe that. And I, I want more of that to happen in Hawaii. So much of Hawaii's ecosystem and economy, there, there's so much wealth in this state and yet it doesn't circulate within this local economy. It, it stays with you know the military or it stays with tourism. And, and we need more opportunities where we support each other and help each other. And I think that this would be a very good way for us to help 
uh, kind of enlarge the footprint of Startup Paradise because we've been a little bit insular. We, you know, yeah, we've been kind of in tech, the corner. Yeah, right. in, the, in the tech techie world. Right. Well, you're certainly going way out outside of that corner. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> with, well, Pony and, and uh, they have just really changed the face of, of eating in Honolulu yes. uh, in a very short period of time. So they are, can you um, uh, give us an idea of who else? Or do you have any other ideas? Who so else the next speaker, uh, we're still locking things down, but the next speaker is actually going to be an investor. They're Ooh. going to help us. Uh, the conversation we'll have with that investor is, is sort of, you know, how do you go to someone and ask for money? It's a terrifying thing. <laughs> what a good question. <laughs> how do you ask for money? <laughs> and like, how do you present things in a way where an investor, what is the perspective of an investor where you have to see it from their angle to be able to persuade them that you're worth their bet? Uh, how do you go about doing that? And of course, he, this investor that we have in mind, he's actually visiting from San Francisco. But I don't want him to talk on a tech level. I just want him to talk as a, just a a general investor. A, a business person. Exactly. Okay. And so I think that would be much more applicable to anybody that has a business that is looking to, to inject some capital into what they're doing. Um, he may also be able to give us a better understanding of, is looking for an investor the best thing to do? Should I just maybe go get a loan? Or, you know, or maybe I should find other ways of financing. I want to... I want people to, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs, because they're working on this thing and they love this thing so much, that's just kind of where their brain is. And what we'd like to do is sort of like lift them out of that a little bit and help them see how to best utilize the resources around them. And sometimes that means looking at things from somebody else's perspective. Well, and hanging out at a picnic table with some excellent local beer yes. and bacon can't hurt in uh, <laughs> broadening one's perspective. <laughs> so there, the tickets are $20. Yes. And um, in, uh, um, both of them sound really exciting. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, in our in our last uh, few seconds, is there mm -hmm. anything else that you'd like to say? No, not really. I'm just really, I am so honored and so happy to be here. Um, Hawaii is has a very special place in my heart. Um, and I feel that even though in the past I've moved around every few years or so, I'm going to have a foot here in Hawaii for the rest of my life. And uh, I want to be someone who comes here and finds a way to give back and, and be useful to the community and help it grow. Um, I don't want to be one of those people who just come here for a vacation and just kind of end up leaving and say, oh, that was a great time. Like, I, I, want, I want to give a piece of who I am to Hawaii because Hawaii is a piece of me now. So, yeah, thank you. You're welcome.